bats have a reputation problem. Their existence has long been the source of myths and horror stories. And now, they're feared for an entirely different reason. Spreading deadly diseases to humans, including SARS, MERS, and most recently, COVID-19. But what often gets overlooked is that we can actually learn a lot from bats. Many bat species have a remarkable resilience to some of nature's most deadly diseases, from cancers to infectious fevers. This discovery has led researchers from around the world to study the mysteries of the bat's immune system, to try to figure out why they're able to survive diseases we can't. So maybe instead of fearing bats, the question we should be asking is, how can we be more like them? Whether you notice them or not, bats are everywhere. You can find them in every continent with the exception of Antarctica, and there are more than 1,400 different species, making them one of the most common mammals on Earth, second only to rodents. Bats also play a vital role in keeping ecosystems healthy by pollinating plants, dispersing seeds, and keeping insect populations in check. Scientists have long been fascinated by bats, and not only because of their strange ability to fight off diseases. Bats are somewhat of an evolutionary mystery. They're the only mammals that can fly and have bizarrely long lifespans. Bats evolved almost 80 million years ago, and we humans evolved 300,000 years ago. So we are amongst the newest species on the planet. If anything, we can learn from bats and learn how to live a successful life as a species, you know? That's RNJ Banerjee. He studies how bats are able to coexist with viruses, including coronaviruses. Some of the most deadly disease outbreaks in the last few decades have been linked back to bats. As of 2013, more than 100 viruses have been detected in bats. But that's not to say that bats are some kind of super carriers of disease. In fact, one recent study found that bats are unexceptional in their ability to spread viruses to humans, when compared to other mammals. They're what's known as reservoir hosts, which means they're able to carry viruses without getting sick, but can pass on the infection to humans and sometimes cause epidemics. Bats are not immune to these viruses, but rather their bodies are just really good at fighting off pathogens. And the clues to how they're able to do this lie in how they evolved to be able to fly. Now when bats are flying, their body temperatures go up to 41 degrees and their metabolic rates are off the roof. During flight, a bat's metabolism will increase about 15 times its resting rate. In comparison, when a bird flies, its metabolic rate only doubles. The act of flying is so strenuous that it causes damage to a bat's DNA, which they need to survive. So bats have actually evolved ways to repair their DNA faster than other mammals. Now the, the, the side effect of this is a lot of the proteins that are involved in this DNA repair pathway are also involved in the immune system. So while bats have been actively evolving processes to limit DNA damage, they have inadvertently evolved processes that also help in antiviral immune response. When other mammals or humans detect a virus, the immune system becomes activated and triggers uncontrollable inflammation to help fight off the threat. And this inflammatory response is a large part of what actually makes you feel sick. But a bat's immune system responds a bit differently. The problem with the response in humans is it's, it's exaggerated in terms of an inflammatory response. It's not that bats don't have an inflammatory response, they have a very dampened inflammatory response relative to humans. Somewhere in their evolutionary timeline, bats lost some of the genes that signal inflammation while still being able to mount a hypervigilant immune response. A new study found that this aggressive immune response actually leads viruses to spread more quickly from cell to cell. And while bats are able to survive these fast replicating viruses, humans and other animals may not. But there's a silver lining. We recently uh, were able to show that the immune response in bat cells, it's, it's way more robust than our own cells. And we were able to identify a super small portion of a protein that allows bat cells to do this. And we took that small portion of the protein and we stuck it into our human protein and that enhanced our own immune response. 
These are all early preliminary studies and are far from being translated into a drug that could be used on humans. But what's clear is that understanding how bats coexist with viruses could be key to figuring out how our own species may one day be able to survive them. Studies have shown that infectious disease outbreaks in humans are on the rise, and the majority originate in animals. But there might be an even easier way to prevent diseases from jumping from animals to humans. It's not like wildlife walked into our cities. It's us that's encroaching on, into their habitats, and we are coming in contact with animals that we otherwise would never come in contact with. Researchers warn that it's our widespread destruction of ecosystems that will set the stage for the next pandemic. We can invest a lot of money in developing coronavirus drugs and vaccines, but that's not going to stop the next virus that's going to be different to emerge from wildlife again. You know, it's, it's all our interaction, it's our behavior that puts us at risk.